If you're on your way to becoming a 3D printing master, then mesh manipulation is one of the most important things that's often overlooked. So I thought I'd make an updated video showing the software I use on a daily basis to repair, manipulate and edit 3D geometry for 3D printing. And the best part is all these programs are completely free. Let's get started. Let's start with Mesh Mixer. Now, if you're familiar with this channel at all, you'll know that I have been using Mesh Mixer for a very long time. It was like the OG program I used to repair bad 3D models for 3D printing and make them manifold and, and actually work. However, unfortunately, Autodesk took over Mesh Mixer and it hasn't had any updates since 2018. A lot of the features in it have been sort of seeded off into other programs like Fusion 360, which is great but I really did enjoy using this program. It seems though that the development's kind of stopped. However, I still use Mesh Mixer all the time because it's got a really good interface and it makes it really easy to visually see 3D geometry. And one of the things I find that Mesh Mixer does better than any other program is selectively editing and removing details from a model if you might not want it. For example, plain cut. So in Mesh Mixer under the edit menu, you can do a plain cut, which can cut your model off at a slice. But other programs can do that now, even slices can easily do that. However, what they can't do is something like this. So for example, I can select this detail here on the ear, and then I can go under edit, and then I can do plain cut. And what this does is isolates that area I just selected and will only cut that geometry. See, it won't actually affect anything else in a model, even though it's intersecting with it. So I find that this little function alone makes me come back to Mesh Mixer and lets me do some edits to models really easily and cleanly that I couldn't otherwise do. So you still should be learning Mesh Mixer. And again, I have all my old tutorials that still work down below in the video description. Next, we have Mesh Lab. Mesh Lab is really interesting because it just had an update, like literally this month at the end of 2020, Mesh Lab got an update and this is a really unusual bit of software. It's incredibly powerful, but very challenging to use. And unfortunately, even with the latest update, uh, there's no real undo functionality. So I generally use Mesh Lab for three things. One is it's very fast opening gigantic mesh files, like I'm talking gigabytes in size. It's by far the most efficient way of opening and viewing those models. But secondly, I use Mesh Lab to fix bad geometry from things like 3D scans or very spotty uh, holes and triangles in models. So for example, this uh, this bunny here, I've sort of destroyed it intentionally and I've filled it with holes like this. Uh, so what I would do in this circumstance is I would use the filter menu, I would go down to reconstruction and I would go down here to the uh, screened poisson. <laughs> so it creates, as it says, a watertight surface from oriented point sets. Um, now, again, there is no undo functionality. If you don't like the result, um, you have to like, un you have to reload the model in, which is a real pain. But here we can just say apply and you can see the result from that is actually really quite decent um, from just the defaults there. It's filled the holes really nicely and it's sort of, it doesn't look, it doesn't look obvious. It doesn't look like there's just flat faces across, which a lot of other repair softwares will do. So if you have uh, 3D scan data that has, that's full of holes, I'd recommend learning Mesh Lab and learning all the different filters it has. Something else that's really powerful in Mesh Lab is the ability to add sort of smoothness to models using one of the various algorithms it has. So for example, like a lot of 3D models, because STLs, they're built up of triangles, will be quite faceted if they're exported at low polygon count, like this, this octopus. And you will generally, you will see those triangles depending on how finely detail you print, especially on like a resin printer, it will very, very clearly show these facets. But again, you can use these filters. For example, we can go down to simplified reconstruction. And the one I like the most is the um, subdivision services loop for this. So you can go there and then select this loop. Um, and then I'll apply that. And you can see how much detail is added back into that model so quickly, like before and after, right? And the thing is, it hasn't just like melted everything to smooth it like a lot of other software will do it. It's sort of, it's, it's clever. It knows there's certain details and features and it's even kept the bottom relatively flat, which is crazy. Uh, it's still not perfect. You might have to do a plain cut, again, maybe in Mesh Mixer, but if, you if you're exporting game models that are low polygon count, 
then yeah, I would recommend chucking them in here after repairing them and having a crack at doing a subdivision, either this one or the butterfly subdivision I'm also a fan of. And it can add this this detail back in. It's not, it's not real detail, but it smooths it and will make the 3D print look a lot better. Pretty crazy. And then finally, I'm just gonna show you how I did the benchy in the thumbnail. It's a really interesting effect. I don't know how useful it is, but it's really pretty cool to do and quite simple. You go to filter, then you go to uh, smoothing, fairing, and deformation, and then you want to go down to random vertex displacement. So this is going to take each vertex and, as it says, displace it by a certain amount. And luckily, this one has a preview, so you can actually test it first. Uh, so um, you can change the number. Uh, world unit, like it doesn't really have clear measurements. Like it, again, Mesh Lab isn't the most easiest to use program in the world, but you can do really interesting things like this here, which um, there you go has taken the vertex vertexes and moved them around. It's a bit like how the Cura has like the fuzzy skin uh, slicing option. You can do this to models to add this texture to them. Maybe you want like a textured grip or something. It could be useful in that circumstance. But I just think it looks really cool. And last but certainly not least is Windows 10 3D Builder. So if you have Windows 10 and you 3D print and you're not using Windows 10 3D Builder, what are you doing? This is ridiculously powerful software and it's baked into Windows 10. And by far what I use Windows 10 3D Builder for the most is the repair functionality within it. Uh, if I remember correctly, it has the NetFab engine. I could be wrong, but that was one of the best repair engines back in the day and you used to have, have to pay thousands of dollars to use it in software. Um, but it's just baked into a into Windows 10 3D Builder. So just to demonstrate, this is the Daedric sword that I ripped from Skyrim and I printed recently on the uh, the CR30, the Namiwu 3D print mill. And I'll just show you here in Mesh Mixer just how bad this file is, how many errors it has. So under the analysis tool, Inspector, it's really terrible. And Mesh Mixer, if you try to repair this, like it just, it can't. It ruins the model, it destroys the geometry. Um, and if you did try to do like a re a remesh or um, fix it, you'd lose the sharp edges. It's no good. However, with 3D Builder, I can just import the model. And you can see down here in the bottom right, it says one or more objects are invalidly defined. Uh, click here to repair. Click. And that's literally it. It's fixed the model. It's now manifold ready for 3D printing. Like that. But that's not the only thing that 3D Builder is good at. For example, the emboss tool is incredibly powerful. If you wanted to add your name or uh, mark a 3D model for printing to identify it as your own, you can use the emboss tool to do it before you print the model. And the really cool thing about it is again, it won't affect the geometry. It won't damage surrounding geometry. The way it does it is really clean. So for example, I'll get my, my name in here um, and I'll just uh, shrink it down a bit. It's way too big. Sure, like that. Okay, and then I'll emboss. And you can see just like that, it's embossed it without ruining the rest of the geometry. And that's across all these different faces and things. I wasn't even very careful doing it. And then you just export this and 3D print it. And you can do other things like hollowing. You can smooth, but again, the smoothing in here isn't as good as the Mesh Lab smoothing algorithms. But yeah, if you haven't been using Windows 10 3D Builder, it's gotten better and better over the years to the point where it's incredibly powerful software. I can't believe it's baked in for free. I know you have to have Windows 10 to get it, but that's pretty easy to get Windows these days. And that's gonna do it. Just a short and sweet video showing the three bits of software that I use all the time to make the models that I'm printing better or edit or alter them or repair them. Uh, but there's definitely a lot more. For example, there's Blender, which is a full blown modeling animation suite that also can be used to edit and repair mesh geometry as well. Please let me know in the comments below what you find useful for altering your meshes for 3D printing. And I hope you found this video useful. Again, there's tutorials on pretty much all of this software linked in the video description in playlists. If you want to deep dive into these free bits of software, because I highly recommend checking them out to level up your 3D printing experience. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.